what are Pythagorean triples? Now this term Pythagorean reminds us of the term Pythagoras theorem. In fact, Pythagorean triples and Pythagoras theorem are very closely related and let's see how. Pythagoras theorem says that if you have a right angled triangle ABC, right angled at B, where A and B are the lengths of the two legs and C is the length of the hypotenuse of this right angled triangle, then A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Okay, now you'll ask how is it related to Pythagorean triples? If we have a set of three positive integers, positive integers, x, y, z, where z is the largest of these three numbers, and if x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared, if this condition gets satisfied, then this is actually pointing towards the Pythagoras theorem. It means that using x, y, and z, these three positive integers as the lengths of the three sides of a right angled triangle, you can form a right angled triangle, something like this. It's a rough diagram, so please ignore the lengths here. So let's say this is z, let's say this is x and this is y, the lengths. So if this condition gets satisfied, x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared, that is it's pointing towards the Pythagoras theorem, it means that these are actually the three lengths of the sides of a right angle triangle. That is why we say that these Pythagorean triples and Pythagoras theorem, these are closely related because now these are Pythagorean triples, x, y, z, these are, this set is actually Pythagorean triples. Okay. Now, let's look at this table. And this is some small primitive Pythagorean triples. Now, I'm going to explain you what do we mean by this term primitive. We have discussed this Pythagorean triples, but what do we mean by primitive? That's what we have to discuss here. So we have one, two, three, and four sets of three positive integers, which we say are Pythagorean triples. It means if you take this one, three, four, five, three, four, five, then three squared plus four squared should be equal to five squared. If you solve it, you get nine plus 16, should be equal to 25. That is 25 is equal to 25. Yes, it is a Pythagorean triple. Same if you want to check for this one, this is 5, 12, 30. Now 5 squared plus 12 squared should be equal to 13 squared if this, these are Pythagorean triples. This is a set of Pythagorean triples. So 25 plus 144 should be equal to 169. So 169 is equal to 169, yes. The condition gets satisfied. Yes, these are Pythagorean triples. You can check for this one in the same way and you can check for this one in the same way. Now, you'll ask, what are then primitive Pythagorean triples? If you look at these four sets of Pythagorean triples, then you will find that their highest common factor or the greatest common divisor is equal to one. The highest common factor is equal to one. That makes them primitive Pythagorean triples. 
So we'll ask that then what's the opposite of primitive Pythagorean triples? And that's a really, very really nice question. And the answer is it is imprimitive Pythagorean triples. Imprimitive Pythagorean triples. Let me explain you what do we mean by that. It's just the opposite of primitive Pythagorean triples that in this case, highest common factor or the greatest common divisor will not be equal to one. In fact, it will be some other positive integer. Okay. So let's take this three, four, five, this Pythagorean triples. Okay. If we multiply this Pythagorean triple by two, then you get six, eight, and 10, right? If you multiply this Pythagorean triple by three, you get nine, 12, and 15. Okay, now, these two sets of three positive integers, these are two different Pythagorean triples that are imprimitive because in this case, actually the highest common factor or the greatest common divisor is now two. And in this case, the highest common factor or the greatest common divisor is now three, right? It means that from primitive Pythagorean triples, you can form as many imprimitive uh, Pythagorean triples. Just simply go on multiplying them, multiplying them with uh, different integers, right? In the same way, you can multiply this with two. So if you multiply this with two, your Pythagorean triples will become 10, 24, and 26. That is imperative one, right? Now, if you want to check whether this Pythagorean triple satisfies x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared, then you can check here. So 6 squared means what 36 plus 64. This should be equal to 100. And if you solve it, you get 100 is equal to 100. So can you see it's actually Pythagorean triples only, but in this case, it is imprimitive because the highest common factor is now in this case 2 and not equal to 1. If you want to check for this one, 9 squared is 81 plus 144. And 15 squared is 225. This should be equal to 225. So 81 plus 144, 44 is 225 is equal to 225. Right? So yes, this these three are Pythagorean triples, but since the highest common factor is 3 and not 1, therefore it makes it imprimitive Pythagorean triples. Okay. Now you can tell for any positive integer m greater than 1, for greater than 1, you can tell your Pythagorean triples using these three algebraic ex expressions. Let's take m is equal to 2. When m is equal to 2, then your Pythagorean triples will be 4. m square means what? 4. 4 minus 1 is what? 3. m square means 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. Right? Let's take m is equal to 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. Then 3 squared is 9 minus 1 is 8. 3 squared is 9 plus 1 is 10. So this is another Pythagorean triplet. Now let's take the last one, m is equal to 4, so 2 times 4 is 8, 4 squared is 16 minus 1 is 15, and 4 squared is 16 plus 1 is 17, right? So in this way we can calculate our Pythagorean triples using uh, these three algebraic expressions but the condition is that your m should always be greater than 1, right? So in the next video tutorial, we are going to discuss problems based on Pythagorean triples.